We here at Gwinnett County Public Libraries believe that parents and guardians will always get the final say in what a child reads. Sometimes I see a child run out to the checkout kiosk with a stack of books they're excited to read, and then their parents tell them to go put them back and pick something else. And more often than not, their parents' reasoning is that they don't want their child reading books with pictures, like graphic novels or comics. I understand the sentiment. Comic books aren't rarely, if ever, taught in schools, nor are they held in the same regard as the type of book you'd find in a high school classroom. I'm here to tell you that not only are comics just as important as traditional literature, they might even be better at making you think. But first, the bad news. In the seventh edition of Scholastic's Kids and Family Reading Report, their studies revealed that starting at age 9, or about 3rd grade, kids' interest in reading began to drop significantly. Only 35% of 9-year-olds reported reading 5-7 to seven days a week, compared to 57% of 8-year-olds. There aren't any definite answers as to why this is, though we can safely assume it has something to do with the internet and video games. What we do know is that when kids are able to pick their own book to read, they're more likely to stick with it. No matter the age or gender, 88% said, that they are more likely to finish a book they have picked out themselves. And as a natural conclusion, 89% of the children in the study agreed that their favorite books were ones that they chose. These are the feelings that we should be fostering because they are what's going to keep your kids reading into their adult years. Plus, comics have come a long way since the newspaper stands and are now held in the same regard as regular books. Whether it's Pulitzer Prize winning works like Art Spiegelman's Mouse or literary classics like The Adventures of Tintin, Graphic novels have proven to be an art form just as respectable as its prosaic counterpart. Their educational potential is also supported by the American Library Association and Common Core Standards as crucial for the academic success of any school-age child. And yes, that includes teenagers. Reading levels for young adults have been going down in the past 20 years. People are reading less and at a less proficient level. The demands of college-assigned readings have only gotten more difficult since the 1960s but increasingly less students are able to meet the benchmark score for reading on their ACTs. The ACT even released a report that said the reason why so many students were failing the benchmark was not because they lacked the ability to define words or understand the main idea of a piece of writing. It was their inability to answer questions pertaining to complex texts. Being able to understand complex texts is essential for success in college, the workplace, and even just navigating everyday life. To determine how complex a text is requires a consideration of a number of factors, but basically, it's anything that challenges the reader to make their own inferences from a text. I do need to stress their own inferences. Even if students read a complex text in school, like let's use The Great Gatsby as an example, they're getting a lot of support from in-class discussions with other students and their teacher, so they can't really process the book the same way they would if they were reading on their own. The problem is then, how do you get your child to read The Great Gatsby on their own? Well, you don't have to, because by Common Core's own standards, a lot of graphic novels are considered complex texts. Let's use Art Spiegelman's Mouse as an example. If you don't know what Mouse is about, it's a part biography, part memoir about the author's family history, which includes his father's experience living as a European Jew during the Holocaust. The book combines and interweaves themes of guilt, culture, and systemic oppression all together into this monumental story that just so happens to feature all the characters drawn as cartoon animals. There is so much critical thinking and cultural information required to fully appreciate the story that even adults might have trouble processing all the political satire and existentialism. I know that sounds like a lot, and it is, but it's definitely worth checking out for yourself or if you have a curious teenager. Now, not all graphic novels are that heavy, obviously nor do they have to be in order to be considered complex text. By definition, graphic novels and comics are a combination of the written word and visual art. That alone allows for the conveyance of more information than prose could in the same amount of space. Not only is this more efficient, but it engages the reader's mind as they are tasked with processing the juxtaposition of written language and sequential images at the same time. There's even something called the dual coding theory of cognition, which says that people actually learn better when they're presented with words and pictures than just words alone. And that makes sense, right? Before we had textbooks and scientific articles, we, as human beings, learned by seeing. We process visual information almost instantaneously, but words still take time for even the fastest readers. You can read the sentence, The Haitian Revolution played a significant role in why Napoleon sold Louisiana to America and forget it tomorrow. But if you see it, experience the narrative, then it's much more likely to stick with you. 
So I'd like to stress that a graphic novel doesn't have to be educational to have something to teach. Just because a graphic novel isn't about a historical event like the Holocaust or the Haitian Revolution, that doesn't mean it's not worth reading. We don't even hold traditional books to that standard, so we shouldn't hold it against comics for focusing on subjects that adults might find immature, especially books for young readers. Most stories about regular kids going to regular schools can help readers navigate and understand the world around them just as well, if not better, than non-graphic novels because of the visual components. Remember, fewer words on a page does not necessarily mean the text is easier to understand. In fact, it's that limitation of graphic novels which force readers to take in the full context of what they're reading. A panel with a single text bubble might not go into as much detail as a paragraph, when that's okay. We want young readers to be able to make deeper connections with the less spelled out for them on their own. If I've maybe changed your mind and you're ready to pick up some graphic novels, here are some recommendations in no particular order. First, we have Lucy Nizzoli's Stepping Stones, which is a story about a young girl who has to move out to the countryside with her mom and her mom's new boyfriend. It deals with a very real struggle that kids might face when they're growing up. We also have Kayla Miller's Click, and really, all of her books are pretty popular. Click in particular is about finding where you belong and the people they can really connect with. For something a bit more educational, but still fun, I recommend Little Monarchs by Jonathan Case, which is the story of a young girl surviving in a post-apocalyptic world, and she just so happens to learn about the plants and animals around her. And don't be afraid to let your kids pick up a superhero comic, because there's lots of great ones. One of my favorites is Superman Smashes the Clan, which takes place in the 1960s and deals with the societal problems going on at the time. And if you want to know more about comics as a medium, check out Scott McCloud's Understanding Comics and Will Eisner's Comics and Sequential Art. If you're looking for kids' graphic novels on a website, all you have to do is click the Kids tab and look for Kids' Graphic Novels. If you're looking for something more advanced, you can click on the Adults tab and click Graphic Novels. Recently released graphic novels are also available under the What's New tab. Though in the branches, you may find graphic novels in our teen section. All the books I've mentioned here are available at your local Gwinnett County Public Library, plus many, many more. So we hope to see you there soon.